Okay, uh, welcome back to one of the final sessions, not the final session, but one of the final sessions uh, where I'll be working on my map for Earshore. So here I'm actually just checking my other map of the, the region to see um, where the roads lead, what other cities. And I'm actually practicing with my softness here to see which one makes my, my road look the best. And I opted for 70%. I'm going to just draw some rough roads that, uh, you know, maybe connect up here to give me a little outline. And then I decided what I want to do is build uh, just, you know, my idea is that this, this city, one of the biggest cities in my world, uh, probably continued growing outside these walls. And actually on this side of the walls, we're in the nation of Gerlir, which is sort of a more peaceful, uh, freedom loving nation that your shore is probably more likely um, to not have any sort of violent um, relations with. And so I felt like that this side, um, they may have been more comfortable to just grow the city out here outside the wall for safety. Uh, they, they weren't as worried. And so I thought, and, I, and one thing I opted to use here are these uh, clusters instead of blocks, which just sort of makes the buildings not quite so closely next to each other. Uh, and you notice I'm not sort of putting them in it easily arranged uh, blocks like I did in the city or as, as easily arranged so that I can get a more, you know, uh, I don't know, natural looking growth of the city. And then with different size brushes here, I'm going to finish off uh, just sort of dirt roads, connecting up the different buildings just to add a little bit of texture to this area. Um, one thing I've been having uh, issues with in this whole map is I think the green is just a little bit too solid and clean for the feel that I wanted here. Um, and, and you'll notice later, I'm going to go over it with a couple other brushes to make it a little bit dirtier. But right now I'm just building in these roads. Um, and I guess I could have filled out this whole space with this, but I wanted more variety. Um, and so uh, when I got down to the bottom here, I thought, uh, okay, I might, I, I might just sort of end here. And up here at the top, I also made the same decision. I'm going to leave it kind of empty uh, with the idea that I might put a uh, a legend or something up there. Uh, I have too many locations in this city to not have a legend. And then I thought down here, why not use some of the cool little uh, hill stuff here to build in a little bit more texture and depth into the map. Um, I had those cliffs up above, but it would be nice to have some hills. And so I'm just going along the edges here trying to find a shape that might fit in. And when it doesn't fit the shape, that's fine. I'll just uh, uh, I'll change the shape and make the shape make, fit the, what the space we have here. So again, getting my add and subtract brush in there, just changing the way it looks. Uh, I thought I'd make these islands and such be a little bit more hilly. Uh, maybe this is why the river sort of bends around here. There's some significant hill space. And again, I wanted to build that in. You know, uh, the next thing I thought was, oh, hey, there's these cool little rocks. Let's let's put in some rocks. Maybe this is a rockier area, some cliff face and so on. Um, there's some small rocks and big rocks. And I, again, started by just looking at the texture and seeing, you know, what do these looks like, look, look like? And what are the, you know, what are they going to, uh, uh, how, where are they going to fit the best? And after I got a little bit of uh, familiarity with them, it became easier to make sort of, all right, I'll put a big rock here, sprinkle some little rocks in there. I grabbed these big, I think these were called green cliffs maybe. Um, I thought I'd make some more cliffs, put a big rock up on the top there and go find a good brush. So here I'm again, checking out my different brush styles. You know, I tried a couple and I went for this light gray. You know, I'm trying different, what softness do I want? Do I want it to take up the whole thing? Um, working with now I'm, I'm just doing brushwork and I'll be honest, I'm not, uh, I'm not as comfortable with brushwork. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm kind of just making it up. So I grabbed the dark brush there and you notice, um, now, yeah, now I'm grabbing the dirt brush on a opacity of about 30, uh, and just rubbing it over the green parts to make it look a little bit grungier here and there. Uh, and I kind of like how that added texture. Um, same thing. I've got about three or four brushes I was using there to add texture. Now I grab my trees. Yep, throw some trees in there. Um, in some places I'm just like plopping them down. Other places I'm trying to be a little more deliberate. Like, oh, this is a little tree. Maybe fits right in that spot. That's why the road goes that way. Is because they built it around this tree. Other spots I'm just like, oh, empty space. Fill it in with some greenery. 
and I don't want to just clog it all up. I want it to look a little bit like it's got some variety, but uh, you know, still. Uh, so when I zoomed out, I, I felt there was a little bit, of, again, some of this green space looks kind of empty to me. Grab some bushes, build a little hedgerow in there, um, put, put some, oh, I had it still on opacity there. I wanted to change it, put some uh, roads in there. I, I remembered when I set this up, uh, my intention was to, you know, as I'm doing here, fill in that little practice yard with some dusty, build some more dusty roads around here. Um, I had been thinking that this might have been a major entrance to the city where I had placed the keep and now it seems like it's sort of off in the corner. Um, that's fine. Um, on this side of the of the city, we're in the nation of Idan and Idan uh, is a little bit more aggressive towards Earshore, at least in the history. And so I thought the city might not have grown as much out here, but there would probably be um, some other uh, uh, Landscape features, I started with, you know, these big cliffs over here. Maybe that's why we don't develop. I took the big cliffs, turned them into hills to sort of make it look like, okay, maybe, uh, you know, the, the cliff is, is not as big there. You could climb up the hill part uh, easier than the cliff. And then I thought, let's add a little double texture to this, make these cliffs even higher um, and maybe separate it out a bit. So, okay, so there's some, some obvious places where you might be able to climb up onto these cliffs and... Go enjoy the view, maybe of the ships leaving the harbor. Again, decorate with some rocks. I really liked how these rocks actually ended up looking uh, to just add some character to these cliffs. Um, as you can see, I've gone pretty good on those. Again, grab my stone brush. So really I did stone and then grab the dark brush on an opacity to go over go. So here I am, dark brush, dark, dark dirt on an opacity. Again, I liked how that added texture in there. Um, it kind of looks like it might be shadows, but I'm, I, I usually go and make shadows at the very end. And I don't, I'm not sure if I will use the shadow brush on this map. I use that more on my battle maps. Um, but again, grab the, the dirty brush, put it on opacity 30. And then I decided why not go do this for the rest of my, the green space in my city. I tried not to do it over the cobble. I wanted the cobble to stay clean but I tried to put the dirt over some of the green space just to, again, make it look a little more ready. Uh, I've been using, I think, three brushes interchangeably there, the stone brush, the, the dirt brush that I've been using already, and um, the dark dirt brush. And then here I am, same thing. Uh, this is a choice I made. There are two ways you can get farmland in there. There are actually stamps you can put down that look like farmland, uh, but they've also made these brushes. And uh, I rotate the brush and I also shrank the brush down uh, to make it give it the sort of image that I wanted. I'm using these farm uh, farmsteads out here and I'm using kind of the gray and yellow ones since Eden is a little bit not as colorful nation uh, that their buildings probably aren't going to be colorfully painted. And yeah, I thought let's go ahead and build, build this up. You can see build some roads up here. And I thought, hey, I remember there's these fences in here. And oh, this is just beautiful little detail work that I think helps out a lot. It, it's a little time consuming, um, but it's just like placing those walls down. Uh, you just put the edges, place them over top of each other. Again, I'm in low def, so I can't really see if my lining up is perfect when it gets to high def, but I'm not super worried about that. Um, my players luckily don't nitpick little tiny details like that, so I'm lucky. Um, but of course you could uh, just, as I mentioned before, maybe switch your development to high def if, you're, if your uh, PC can handle it. Or um, as I sometimes do, switch to high def at the very end to just um, nitpick little details. Again, fill in the empty space with some trees. I might do more down here later. I'm not sure, maybe put a little lumber mill or something down there. Um, but for now, I thought a nice little empty space is great. Again, just detailing the roads. And I decided, okay, I really want more farms out here. I don't want it to be empty. It's a little time consuming to set up. So as I was building this, I was like, oh no, how many more farm farms do I want to put in here? And I think as a result of that, my farm started getting a wee bit bigger. As you saw, those, those two down there are kind of tiny. And then I thought, okay, hey, look, that space almost twice as big as the other farm spaces. Um, but again, just putting some fencing in. This is actually the most time consuming part. Um, but also I feel very rewarding. It really makes the, the space look cooler. And I thought, okay, so I've got enough crops over here. I was like, maybe I should make a little ranch 
Um, so this one I thought I'd get the dust in there, the dirty one. Uh, again, uh, colored it over with some darker dirt just to make it, uh, the contrast not as, as stark. And throw some barns in there. Um, there might be some animals I could put in there, but I, I didn't want to go all the way to that level again. Get my roads going. Maybe it would make another barn or make another farm over here. Uh, this this entry road came right through the farm, so I thought, what a great way. Why don't we split the fields uh, into two? One that's maybe uh, just left uh, fallow. Is that what they call it? Um, when you you leave your 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 field and, and to not grow anything over the the year so that it, it builds up in nutrients and such. Uh, I thought that space over here, hey, this isn't a great space for a farm. No one would want to farm in that little cliff space. No sun gets down there. There's probably a bunch of rocks and stuff in there. So got back to grabbing my boulders and my rocks and filling them in. Um, I kind of liked how that looked. And then I thought, hey, if there's a bunch of rocks and stuff down here, maybe that's because uh, they did some quarrying down here. And so again, brushwork to try and make it look a little bit more like a quarry. And that's, this is when I decided, hey, I know, let's go grab one of those mason huts, maybe build a fence around the quarry. And uh, then I said, okay, if it's a quarry, we need a little bit more stone in there, get a little more stone. And again, I'm quite happy how that turned out using the brush and, uh, and the stones there. Then I realized, hey, that drawbridge is coming down. There probably should be a road, road there. And again, I've sort of just decided, well, maybe at one point in the history, there was an entranceway there uh, where the bridge went down the cliff. But um, these days, uh, it's mostly farmland down there. And if, if Edan ever comes to do war, they probably uh, probably do some harm to these farmers if these farmers aren't already Edanian. Um, in which case, they probably take over this farmland and, and maybe steal the crops to feed their army. Uh, so I thought put a couple more farms in here, uh, but otherwise I'm feeling pretty done. Uh, and as I mentioned up above, I've left that part undetailed yet because I'm probably going to put a big legend in there, um, in which case that, that detail would be wasted. Um, and then I'll add any extra detail around the legend when I'm done. So I, this part I'm putting right here might be under the legend too, uh, but... Uh, you know, I wanted to finish up to those cliffs at least. Uh, again, a little extra brush work just to fill it and dirty it up a bit. And then I thought, all right, well, the other space I left kind of empty was this space in the bottom left. And this is where I wanted to put my main uh, label. Uh, this was a cool one because it's got some see-through stuff in the background. So I had to delete a little bit of that island. And of course, my city's name is Earshore and try all the fonts out. I've done this several times trying all the fonts out and there are about um, two or three that I always end up using. The first two or three are actually pretty good. I think that might be why they put them at the, at the top. But I go and I try all of them. Um, and Earshore was originally founded by dwarves a thousand years ago. Uh, so I thought something that maybe looked a little dwarvish. Um, it's also a free city. It's the only free city state in the subcontinent of Gurdan. So I thought I'd call it the free city of Earshore. And then uh, I wanted the background. I wanted it crimson, but it's got this darkness. And, I, you know, I wasn't really sure what to do because crimson is the color of Earshore. Of course, we've got the crimson keep and such. So instead, I, and what I'm doing is I'm painting the ocean beneath it because it's see-through. It's got a little opacity on it. I painted it pink and it came out this sort of, I don't know, brownish reddy color. I decided maybe I'll try and get the crimson in the lettering. Every time I do this, I kind of zoom out, see how it looks in contrast. Um, uh, again, I'm adjusting things like the hue, the brightness and such of the stamp, and I'm also adjusting the colors used in my text. So uh, I turned the brightness all the way up on the stamp, which made it look a little more like it's got silver around the outside. Um, and I thought that looked a little bit better. And I'm feeling pretty close to the end. 